Should the British Museum return all the items that were stolen during the colonial era? Would this mean the end of history museums as we know them? The British Museum is the world's largest world history museum. It was founded in 1753, before the Louvre or the Smithsonian. This is a time known as the colonial era, during which powerful countries such as Britain, France and Spain were fighting for economic control over countries all over the world. Colonization meant imposing religion, language and values on other people. It also meant with few exceptions, acts of violence and theft. The British Museum contains many artifacts which were stolen during the colonial era. This leads to an ethical discussion. Should Britain return these artifacts to their original countries? Would this set a precedent for other museums? First, how many artifacts in the British Museum are actually stolen? Without an official number, The Guardian states that the museum is the world's largest receiver of stolen goods, and most of the loot is not even on display, says Jeffrey Robertson, QC. The human rights lawyer argues that this is pilfered cultural property, stolen from subjugated peoples by conquerors or colonial masters. Some of the world's most valuable artifacts are inside the British Museum, and many of them are stolen. Hoa Hakanania, the Eastern Island statue, the Elgin marbles from the Parthenon in Athens, the Rosetta Stone, taken from Egypt, the list goes on. One stands out though. At the tower floor in the African Hall, there are about 4,000 statues, the Benin Bronzes. In 1897, the British came to the Benin Kingdom in present-day southern Nigeria. After a case of subordination from a few local guards, the British Army decided to lead a punitive mission on the whole territory. They massacred thousands of people and looted extremely valuable items with hundreds of years of history. This wasn't a coincidence. The Army knew that stealing all these artifacts could cover the cost of the invasion mission. These items had enormous value to the people of Benin. Professor Chike Okeke Agulu says these objects were visual archives of the kingdom's history, as Benin didn't have a written language as we know it today. When the British looted these artifacts, they caused a deep trauma to both the kingdom's history and wealth. And this is just one case. The phenomenon of European colonial powers pillaging African countries was so big that it has a name, the Scramble for Africa. After World War II, the British Museum agreed to sell Nigeria a few of the Benin bronzes. Isn't this a bit like a robber selling the stolen goods to the robbery victim? The discussion is deeper than this. Museum looting is one of the ways European countries got rich in the 19th century. Museums would steal items from the colonized countries, then sell them to other museums and collectors worldwide. The Benin bronzes are not just bronze statues, actually. There are engraved ivory tusks plasques, and masks. These can be found in the Leipzig Museum of Ethnography, the Quai Branly Museum in Paris, and the Pitt Rivers Museum in Oxford, and more. The British Museum made millions of pounds just from selling the Benin statues to other museums. Imagine the profits made from selling all the artifacts that they sold throughout the last century. While the British Museum is state-run, some are founded by private collectors. The Pitt Rivers Museum was founded by Augustus Henry Lane Fox, a Yorkshire native who took the name Augustus Pitt Rivers after his rich relative died. With the money, he traveled around the world and auctioned for items that caught his eye. This was a popular activity among rich Europeans in the 19th century. The problem here is the same. The auction houses also belonged to rich Europeans who had stolen the artifacts from subjugated people. Just like the British Museum, the Pitt Rivers has a great number of controversial artifacts on display. One of the most troubling collections is the Chouard Sanses, or the shrunken heads from Ecuador and Peru. Apart from being stolen, the shrunken heads were displayed in a context which reinforced the prejudiced belief that white people are superior. The hall reads, Primitive Medicine. Words such as primitive, savage, or barbaric were frequently used in the colonial period by the conquerors. They reinforced a forced narrative of European imperialism and superiority. 
Today we live in the post-colonial era, and countries all over the world are requesting that their artifacts, along with these words, be removed from European and American museums. That is why in 2020 the Pitt Rivers Museum removed the shrunken heads from display. The former display now shows a text about the ethical code behind this move. This is one of the many moves that museums and collectors are now making. Berlin is currently negotiating the return of the Benin bronzes to Nigeria. Their museums currently hold 440 statues from the Kingdom of Benin, just over a tenth of those held by the British Museum. As part of the agreement between Berlin and Nigeria, Germany will help with archaeological excavations in the region, train Nigerian museum employees, and help build a museum in Benin for the newly returned artifacts. This ethical decision is probably one of the many to come, but the British Museum doesn't yield. Victor Ehikamenor, a Nigerian artist, spoke about the situation. If Germany follows through with these plans, then any European country that holds on to Benin bronzes no longer has a moral ground to stand on. The time has come for the British Museum to finally join in this debate. The current situation is a bit like a thief that has stolen your watch and sold it to a pawn shop, but the pawn shop is refusing to hand it over to the police. It makes no sense. Although the British Museum seems to acknowledge the disasters caused by Imperial Britain, it also refuses to restitute the artifacts. In 2000, the British Museum even denied an official request from the Benin royal family to return the Benin bronzes. In July 2020, the British Museum said, We don't restitute, but we are absolutely committed to lending as widely as possible, including to Nigeria. The museum's foundational value resides in its breadth, scale, complexity, and unity, and as such, is a true library of the world. Is this the ultimate argument that the British Museum will use to get out of returning the stolen items? Is the real reason a fear of other countries asking for their artifacts back? If the museum restitutes all sculptures to Nigeria, then what if Egypt, Greece, and India all send a request too? Will the British Museum have anything left to display? The German broadcaster Deutsche Welle has expressed this worry too. This rapidly shifting landscape would eventually empty museums and galleries in Western countries. But the returning of stolen artifacts to their original lands is more than an ethical gesture. For many of the oppressed people who suffered the losses, this gesture has restorative qualities. In the New York Times, Chip Caldwell writes that Native Americans are in a state of constant mourning. Stolen artifacts and ancestor skeletons are still a big trauma for indigenous peoples in the United States. As museums in the country return these items to their original owners, Native societies speak about healing. So why does the British Museum still refuse to take action in this restorative move? Is the true library of the world argument enough? Indeed, the British Museum has one of the most impressive collections of world history artifacts. Many children come here to see artifacts they probably wouldn't be able to see otherwise. They learn about the world from one trip to one place in central London. People from all over the world could come here to see some very special items. But not everyone can visit London. Professor Chika Okeke Agulu was born in Nigeria, yet the first time he saw a Benin bronze was in London and he was one of the lucky Nigerians who got a visa to visit the UK. Many people around the world can't afford to visit London to see artifacts from their country. Is this fair? Should the British Museum work to accommodate them as well as solve deep trauma suffered by many peoples? While the Leipzig Museum and the Kwai Branly Museum in Paris have already begun returning stolen items back to their original countries, including the Benin Bronzes, as of March 2021, the British Museum has only agreed to a loan. That is, they are loaning Benin bronzes to Nigeria, after stealing them from Nigeria. The British Museum expects the sculptures back. It seems like the British Museum is only just starting to acknowledge the stolen nature of their popular artifacts. Acknowledging that the artifacts were stolen is the first step towards a modern, ethical approach to museums. Will the British Museum take the next step? What do you think they should do next? Let us know in the comments. <music>